that autofocus system. Today. Today. Today we've got a fun one. It's not that fun. It's a lot of information. Don't worry, it'll still be fun. Today we're gonna be revealing a lot of information. And also today I get to announce something exciting. I'm not sure how much of my audience knows, I'm sure some of you guys do, about Chapter, which is the hair product that uh, Jordan O'Brien and Carlos Roberto have been working on for a little while. Jordan from The Gentleman's Cove have finally been able to put this up for pre-sale, so it is available for pre-sale right now. And I'm holding right here the official jar. There's no actual product in it. Yet. But I have had the chance to use samples from the formula in the past, so I have used the final formula. Um, I just don't have any of it right now. And I'm really excited about it. I think it's a really solid product. From my experience, um, I think it has a bit more of a high hold rather than being natural, but in a very good way. So I guess if you use less, I guess if you used less, then you would have a bit more of a natural hold. But the amount that I like to use for my hair, I was able to get a really good uh, hold out of their product. And it's gonna be matte finish, so it doesn't have a shine. Some good stuff. Blue Mon has of course been here in the past, so we offered guidance uh, for Jordan and Carlos along the way. Happy, jeez, I can't hold on to this. I'm happy to finally see the work that they've been putting in come to light, so if you do wanna check it out, it'll be linked in the description down below. So today we're starting a new segment to the channel, a new series. I've thought long and hard about the name, and I've come to the creative decision that hair myths is gonna be a good one. Every now and again, we're gonna go over some hair myths, or at least, are they hair myths, or are they actually true? And that's the question that we're gonna answer um, in a few videos. So the question today is, are there actually hair products that are bad for your hair? And then specifically, I'm gonna be diving into two main ingredients. So I'm gonna be talking about sulfates, and I'm gonna be talking about parabens. These are the two big ones that keep coming up time and time again. So are some ingredients in hair products actually bad for you, or what is their main purpose? Uh, why do people include them in the first place? Let's talk about it. I'm sure you've seen that there's a lot of products that have come out, uh, especially in the last few years, emphasizing that they are sulfate and paraben free. So what does that actually mean? Is it actually something that's important? Um, does it really matter? Or is it more of a marketing scheme for these companies to making, making them the big dollars? Well, short answer is it's a little bit of both. So let's start off with parabens. What are these parabens actually used for? What is their purpose? Well, parabens are used as a preservative uh, ingredient in cosmetic products, including hair products. So their main purpose is to preserve the life of a product, make it last longer, basically. And the reason why these ingredients are considered a little iffy is because they have been found in, uh, par parabens have been found in certain cancers uh, and mainly breast cancer. But the thing is just because parabens have been found in breast cancer does not mean, and there's no evidence that parabens are actually causing cancer in the first place. Now I'm not saying for sure that parabens don't cause cancer. I'm just saying that right now, there's not uh, scientific evidence that they do. It's a study that is just still being studied and there's no conclusion yet. And what's more important is that a number of health organizations, so not cosmetic companies that might have some bias, but actual health organizations, and I'll write the ones right here. These guys have stated that the amount of parabens that are actually used in cosmetic products are not nearly enough to cause damage to your body. Basically, if parabens are used, it's in too small of an amount to really make a difference uh, to you. Now, there's still the question of, well, if you use a cosmetic product for a long period of time that includes uh, parabens, then that small amount over time turns into a large amount. And again, that's where a little bit of a question is and unknown as to, do parabens really have an effect or do they not? So that's pretty much why parabens are considered a little bit like, oh no. And a lot of cosmetic companies choose not to use them. These are simply questions that don't have exact answers. Now, about sulfates. Whew. There's a lot more proof about sulfates. I covered a little bit more about sulfates in last week's video. Uh, that's the best way to clean your hair and uh, keep it healthy at the same time. If you missed that, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, go into a bit more detail. So now the main concern around sulfates is that they are a harsh detergent. This means that they are very effective at cleaning your hair, but probably a little bit too effective. And they just remove everything and that can cause dryness in the hair. Also, sulfates affect people differently. In general, and what can be applied to everyone is that they do cause a dryness um, and they strip your hair from their natural oils. But for some people, they can also experience scalp irritation and sensitivity. Uh, so that's not very nice. But it really comes down to how someone's gonna experience this ingredient. Also worth noting, the cosmetic ingredient review states that sulfates used up to 50% 
in a formula is considered safe as long as it is um, washed completely off of your body. Now 50% is quite a lot. Most cosmetic companies that do use sulfates are using about a 10 to 30% in their formula. So that's well below the 50% safety line in terms of long-term effects. So you can still experience hair dryness and some people might uh, experience some irritation or sensitivity, but there shouldn't be anything that causes long-term damage to your head or your body. It's all short-term. If you switch out your shampoo, you should be okay. For me, I prefer sulfate-free. If the option is readily available, it definitely does make my hair feel less straw-like um, than a sulfate shampoo. But from experience of starting the Bloom on Hair Product Company, um, I know that these manufacturers and these chemists are following a very strict protocol to use safe ingredients or at least a safe amount of a certain type of ingredient so that the buyer isn't going to be negatively impact in a super major life-altering way basically like at the end of the day arguments can be made for both sides if you can get stuff without parabens and sulfates by all means go for it if you can't or like you can't at the moment or for whatever reason I wouldn't sweat it too much thank you guys for checking out this week's video again if you're interested in looking into chapter and Jordan stuff that is the first link in the description description down below. That's it for this week. Have a lovely sleep tonight and I'll see everybody next time.